okay. I'll roll away the reproach of Egypt. Anything from Egypt, anything of bondage, I'll remove it from your life. So there's no trace of it. That's the God that we serve. Yeah, it's not about sin. It's not about sin. God is not, it's not about taking away your sin. It's about taking away your limitations, you see? And God not only will, God can do it. God can do it. And so, so watch this. God says, I'll do it. And it came to pass, verse 8, we're going to read in King James. It came to pass when they had done circumcised all the people, they abode in their place in the camp till they were whole. I want you to go to three people. And if I had to give today's message a title, look at them and say, stay till you're okay. Just look at somebody and say, stay till you're okay. Get out of your seat. Go to somebody you haven't talked to. Say, God's dealing with you today. Say, stay until you're okay. Say, stay until you're okay. Just put your hand on your spirit. Say, stay until you're okay. You're not going to just. Yeah, because that's what that was all about. God, you know, the Israelites, there was absolutely no way God could have ever delivered the Israelites until they were healed. You know, he couldn't roll off that reproach of Egypt until they were healed. So they got to stay until they're healed. And you yourself, you know, you're in a tough situation. You're in a financial bind. Your 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 health is is going downhill, and you're just you, you've been praying. You're in your Egypt, and you've been praying for that reproach to roll off of you. And and but but see, here's here's what the text of Joshua is trying to tell you: you need to stay until you're healed. You need to stay until you're okay. Just keep on going through. Stay till you're okay. Grab the person's hand next to you. Let's pray. Reach all the way across the aisles. I've got about 40 minutes, minutes to minister, and I know what God's going to do. So, Spirit of the living God, I surrender to you, and I thank you in advance for a supernatural manifestation of your healing. I love how she says, Spirit of God, I surrender to you. Well, let me ask you a question. Is Paula White surrendered to the Holy Spirit? If she was, I can guarantee you she would not be standing behind a pulpit. Because what does the Word of God say? God makes it very, very clear in His Word. In 1 Timothy 2, 11 through 14, it says this, Let a woman learn quietly with all submissiveness. That's the Apostle Paul. Uh, women are not to be behind a pulpit. They just are not to be behind a pulpit. God makes that very, very clear. It's not that, again, that women are inferior to men, but they are not to be behind a pulpit. Paul says, let a woman learn quietly with all submissiveness. I do not permit a woman to teach or to exercise authority over a man. So a woman is not to do two things. Number one, she's not to teach a man. All right. She's not to teach a man and she's not to exercise authority over a man. In other words, she's not to be a pastor. She's not to be behind a pulpit. She is not to teach at a man at all. Rather, she is to remain quiet. And here's why Paul says, for Adam was formed first, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman was deceived and became a transgressor. Now, Adam sinned willfully. <laughs> you know, Adam's, Adam wasn't deceived at all. He just willfully sinned. As our representative, he broke uh, the law of God by eating of the tree. But it was Eve that was deceived. And so <laughs> the, Paul makes it very, very clear that women are not to be pastors. Uh, they are not to be standing behind a pulpit. So don't tell me that you we, we surrender, Holy Spirit. I surrender to you. No, Paula, you, you haven't surrendered because you're behind a pulpit, number one. And number two, you embrace and teach word of faith heresy. Healing power. That today is a day of deliverance, restoration. That it, you will revive us, awaken us. That we will live. I decree and I declare the word of the Lord to be heard. Open every ear that we can receive and hear what thus saith the Lord. I thank you that our hearts are open, ready, and receptive. And that today we walk out of here saying, wasn't it good to be in the house of the Lord? We give you an advance praise that there are angels that show up and there is an anointing that destroys every yoke. We put the devil on notice back off yeah you just back off devil you get out of here devil and the bible makes it clear you're not to you're not to speak to uh you're not to speak to demons either and isn't it amazing how she's praying to god and talking to the devil all at the same time Whew. 
by the blood of Jesus. No weapon formed against us will be able to prosper. We thank you for freedom, for healing, and for wholeness. In the name which is above every name, the name of Jesus Christ. And everybody said, amen. Slap somebody, say, stay till you're okay. Say, stay till you're okay. You can be seated. As we studied last week, um, they had so much of Egypt in them that they could not receive the place of promise, the land that was flowing with milk and honey, because they had come out of Egypt, but Egypt had not come out of them. And deep down on a subconscious level, we really delved into, and I, I dealt a lot with circumcision last week, but today I'm going to deal a lot with healing. Look at somebody say, God wants to heal you every place you're hurt. God wants to do a deep work in you. And so on a deep subconscious level, they really didn't believe that they were worthy of God's goodness. What in the world is she talking about there? In a deep subconscious level, they really didn't feel that they were worthy of God's goodness. She's actually adding to Scripture. She has absolutely no idea how the Israelites felt. That's just silly. Um, she's actually adding to the word. The word of God doesn't say that anywhere in the book of Joshua. Now, it sounds kind of crazy, but life has a way of lying to us. And the enemy makes sure that you have a setup in your life that will keep you away from the purpose and the plan of God. But you hear me say it often. The devil is a liar. And so the Bible says that we be in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight because of the way that they saw themselves and perceived themselves is what they attracted into their life. Yeah, that's just plain out word of faith heresy. That is all that is. That is what is called the law of attraction. The law of attraction is the name that she used to be, uh, that, that, that uh, means like attracts like. You know what I mean? It's, it's nothing but uh, new thought in metaphysics, and that's where the word of faith heresy comes from. It has its roots in new thought. Um, and it's No, the Israelites didn't attract ne negativity, and that's why they couldn't go into the promised land. Again, nothing there in that statement but pure word of faith heresy. Really what kept them out of the promised land was not the devil, was not God, it was themselves. And often what keeps us out of the goodness of God is the biggest enemy is not on the outside, it's the inner me. It's the enemy that we fight within. It's the things that the enemy sent in seeds that got planted in our heart, our mind, our spirit, even our subconscious that sometimes take so much work to uproot. But trust me, it is worth it. That God wants to give you a life of abundance. So an entire generation will die off. And when you can't deal with what's in you, then you will die in the wilderness because wilderness people are wanderers. But I break every spirit of wandering. I break every spirit of fugitive and vagabond. You will not be hooked on surviving. It's not, you're not supposed to live day to day, week to week. Your big hope in life is not supposed to be, can I just make it to the next day? So God wants you to be prosperous and they use that 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 verse life more abundantly when the the verse is, is, that, that uh, she's referring to let me go over and read it is john ten ten. the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy i came that they may have life and have it abundantly well the point of the passage is eternal life we're not speaking of the temporary life the bible's very 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 clear that the the pursuit of money will lead us astray, will lead a person astray. Now, there's, there, there's just all kinds of scripture that talks about that. The fact is that sometimes God doesn't <laughs> want us healthy. As a matter of fact, uh, the Bible makes it clear that, well, sometimes God grants us suffering. For example, second, uh, or Philippians 1.29, for it has been granted to you that for the sake of Christ you should not only believe in him, but also suffer for his sake. Suffering is ordained by God. God sometimes, and well, a lot of the times, allows his people and has given his people a path of suffering to walk through. 
I, this is the prosperity gospel does nothing but hurt Christians because what it does is it says if I am going through certain uh, trials or or if I'm I'm suffering from uh, a, a physical condition or whatnot, it, it's my fault because I don't have enough faith. And if I only had enough faith, I wouldn't be going through this sickness. I wouldn't be going through these financial difficulties. And, and it just destroys people's faith because it makes it about them. It makes their it makes it their fault. And sometimes, yeah, it is our fault that we struggle financially. We don't know how to spend our money right or we, we don't know how to save or whatnot. But that the, the fact of the matter is, is that um, sometimes God just, well, he allows his children and, and even ordains that his children are poor. Or suffer. I mean, it, how are you going to speak this way to the Christians in, well, say somewhere in Uganda, that you know they're 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 meeting in a in a grass hut, and they're just enjoying the word of God and listening to the word of God being preached. Are they sinning because they're living in poverty? Well, a word faith teacher would tell you, yes, they are sinning because they are living in poverty. What about the Christians who are suffering in prison under persecution? Is it God's will that they be there? Absolutely. The very fact of the matter is is that Paul makes it clear that those who want to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. So, you know, this, this whole idea that God just wants you to be abundant in life. He doesn't want you to suffer. He doesn't want you to go through uh, tr- these, these, these trials and these, these financial difficulties and, and sickness and all that stuff. Well, here's the thing that you got to think of. If God didn't want his children to suffer at times, then why did he, uh, why did the Apostle Paul write in Romans 8, 16 and 17, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him. Why then does the Apostle Paul mention that and, and mention suffering? Why does the Bible make it very clear that Christians do often suffer and they will often suffer? So things to think about. There's a whole lot more than just surviving. And when we get to our text, we find several things for this generation, this new generation to get in the promised land. And I'm going to take you right into the the, the new part of our text. But there were four things I just want to remind you of. The first thing that happened is that the pillar of fire by day and the cloud by night ceased. And what that means is there is a place you get to that you're not supposed to live by just signs, wonders, and miracles. In fact, signs, wonders, and miracles are supposed to be for the unbeliever. We're not supposed to look for a sign or God show me a sign or I want a miracle because miracles were for those that were in the wilderness. When you live in the promised place, you live at the top of the barrel. You're not living from beneath. You're not just having to rely. You rely on God day by day, but in a different way. The dependency is. Give us this day our daily bread. Jesus told us to pray. Give us this day our daily bread. No, we we are to rely on God day to day, not in a different way, but for our daily sustenance. A different dependency because you move into a place of promise. And, And so you now become a blessing instead of just trying to get blessed. I don't know who I'm here for, but, but you're getting ready to shift position. God wants to shift you in every area of your life. And so there's a time that we grow up and we get off the milk of the word and we get on the meat of the word. There's a time that you shouldn't be serving God after 30, 40 years and you're hearing the same message over and over and going to the same conference over and over and not really seeing results. God's word works in your life if you work God's word. The second part was that the manna ceased and manna came down every day and so manna is what they what god would feed them with and and they had to begin to eat the their corn of the land so the, the teaching of that is that there is a time when you move into the promised land that you have to learn how to plant 
how to plow because remember when you plant the seed and the word of God is always referenced as seed. So it's like a, a seed. It was referred to in Mark chapter four, like corn and stalks that grow. And it's always referenced as the same thing. And immediately when the word sown, who comes after the word? Satan comes immediately. So what happens when you get a word of God? The enemy wants to take that word. He wants to choke it with the cares of life. He, he wants to send demonic spirits to cause you to move in fear instead of faith because there's always a battle over the word of God sown in your life. That's why you have to guard your heart.